Welcome back to the Dallas Prospect. We are talking Mavericks season opening win over the San Antonio Spurs, 126 to 119. These are my five big takeaways from the game here. I'm going to mix it up a little bit this season with how I do these post game shows. I'm not doing every game, putting that out there right now. But when I jump on here, I'm generally going to have anywhere from five to 10 thoughts on a particular game. So, Right out of the gate, we get a curveball before tip-off in the pregame from Jason Kidd. We're not going with the starting five we've anticipated. It makes sense, right? We talked all off-season about who the starting five was going to be, This particularly the center. Oh, no, is it going to be Dwight Powell again? Maybe it's Derek Lively. He looks like he's ready. Maybe it'll be Rashawn Holmes for the short term. The answer is none of them because last night, Jason Kidd, pulled a fast one on everybody and decided, you know what? We're going to go with Maxi Kleba and Derek Jones Jr. in the starting lineup. Nobody talked about those lineups. The thing is, Kid's idea, the game plan, was that they were going to counter the Spurs offense, particularly the diverse skill set of Wimby, with defensive specialists. Well! Well, that didn't go so well because the Spurs dropped 43 points in the first quarter and things didn't really settle down for Dallas until Lively integrated into the game and kind of settled in. Case in point, after giving up 43 in that opening frame, the Mavericks defense, which looked so lost defensively and in terms of its assignments, really turned it around. After that, they gave up 25 in the second quarter. So they had a 68-64 lead at half did the Mavericks. 23rd points in the third quarter, and then 28 in the fourth quarter. Hey, man, when you give up 40 spot in the first quarter, I'm going to take anything sub 30 the rest of the way and just bank on my offense to do enough. And this offense should have the firepower to do enough. So good defensive response from Dallas. The Spurs, they're not a good team. They're going to be a much better team than they were last year when they lost like 60 games. But even still... This is a game that Dallas trailed in large part, and you would like to see them pull away from them, but they just kind of dug themselves a bit of a hole that took some time to work through. Speaking of Wimby making his NBA debut last night, dude, it's not like this is breaking news. The dude is so smooth, so fluid, so confident in what he's doing. If he can stay healthy, he is going to be a real, real problem, a true unicorn. There is nothing like him. All of the hype of what Porzingis is or what other guys of that similar mold rare as they already are could be this is like this is that times 10 this is the as any called him NBA 2k create a player maxed out on all qualities seven foot four with the body control and handles and shooting of a guard and not even just a typical guard like a higher tier guard the vision and the passing everything you see from him is Really just impressive. Now, here's the thing. Being that last night was his NBA debut, I think Dallas dodges a little bit of a bullet here. Yes, he got in some foul trouble. He had five fouls for the game, and that limited him to 23 minutes. In 23 minutes, he had 15 points and was six of nine from the field. I think four of six on three um, from the three. So, yeah, the dude was confident, and he was smooth. There was no doubt. Every time he shot the ball... I just assumed it was going to go in. Like, he looks that complete. However, because he's making his debut and because he's a young player, the Spurs historically, namely Greg Popovich, like to bring guys along slowly. And it kind of reminds me of Luka's rookie year. Carlisle had a similar MO. If you look the year before Luka, Dennis Smith Jr. Rarely started, played about 15 minutes a game. It wasn't until year two he was supposed to be an everyday starter, and then you saw how quickly that fell apart. But Luca was so good, he forced Rick's hand. And within about four or five games, Rick kind of realized, like, I need to just take him off the leash to let him go be special and be what he is. I think Popovich is at a similar place with Wimby, but it wasn't going to be just an immediate all at once. He doesn't want to overexpose him. He doesn't want him to be overaggressive and draw fouls because Wimby is trying to block everything because of his body control, flexibility, footwork, athleticism, length, all of that. He's going to try and block everything, and he's so big he can just get away with altering shots. But rather than just focus on that, he's hunting the blocks, and that's getting him in trouble just a little bit. 
Uh, he, he will record a bunch of blocks overall. He only had one last night, but he will get a lot of blocks. But that's kind of the, the progression of adapting to the physicality of the NBA game is finding that balance point. So Wimby overall, 23 minutes, 15 points. Looks like the real deal. Um, but catching him on his debut as opposed to a week, two weeks into the season when that leash has extended and now he's kind of let loose, it's a very different animal. So the next time around when you see him, it's going to be a different case, I think. And that's that's when the real competition will begin. Early going for Dallas, Tim Hardaway Jr. was a house of fire. And then that house burned to the ground in the second half. Early on, Dallas couldn't get much going in the way of offense. They were struggling to find a rhythm, but not Tim Hardaway Jr. Coming in off the bench, doesn't matter if he doesn't have a defined role. Doesn't matter if he's talked to his coach and knows if he's going to be traded in a week. Tim Hardaway Jr. comes in and he knows one truth. That is to shoot the ever-living piss out of the ball. Make, brick, doesn't matter. He's going to take the shot. And he came out, was four for four right out of the gate, getting to the line. He had like 15 points in the blink of an eye. It was like 15 points in eight minutes. And you're just like, damn, okay, this dude's running wild. He's going to go nuts. He did not go nuts <laughs> because after that four for four start, I think he ended the game five of 14, uh, something like that. W um, just a, a rough game for him. Three of 10 from three, two points in the second half after a dominant first half with 15. So, Hey, kudos to him, man. He did have six rebounds and four assists. Those are not no numbers you normally get from Tim Hardaway Jr. He was not just taking every shot he could get his hands on. I think he's just doing the best he can in the situation, trying to make the most of an uncertain situation for himself and, uh, you know, not come across as selfish, but in the second half, Ooh, that shot was not dropping. There was no, there was no tail off or anything like that. When the shot left him, it was done. So that was, that was the challenge there, but you know, kudos to him all the same. He, he was huge for Dallas early on when they were just trying to weather the storm and stay in striking distance of the Spurs as they ran out to that big 43 point first quarter Dallas trailed by as much as 12 in the game, but early on it could have been even worse because not a lot of guys had rhythm going. Kyrie wasn't effective, like in terms of his efficiency, he wasn't terribly effective last night. Um, but even still, Hardaway kept you in it early. And then in the second half, you had other guys waking up and kind of going nuts. And that was, a, I think Dallas hanging in this game early was a, in big part because of Hardaway. So kudos to him. Let's talk now about the other center in the equation. Wimby might have had the headlines. Wendy, uh, Wendy, <laughs> Wimby might have had the the adoring attention and all the eyes on him, but it was another center taken in that draft who really put on a show and opened a lot of eyes. I've been talking for a while about seeing Tyson Chandler 2.0 when I look at Derek Lively the second, and this opener, yeah, it's one game, I get it, but dude. It lived up to exactly what I thought he was. The fact he came out there, he was physical. He was able to um, he was able to alter shots. He looked confident on defense. Again, the defense settled in when he got more of a role. He ended up playing about 30, 31 minutes. And things just seemed like they slowed down. He scores 16 points, grabs 10 boards, so a double-double in his debut. Love that. Had a block, had a steal, altered several other shots. I think he had three or four fouls on the game, so nothing crazy about what you would expect in those situations. But he just looked very fluid. And, uh, you know, it wasn't just him throwing down pterodactyl arm tomahawks off a off an alley-oop pass from Luka. It was also just the the way in which he was able to stick with his man, even as the they were spreading the ball out, trying to get away from the basket, trying to put him out in space like you would a typical big. He did very well with all of that. And his big impact came in the third quarter there. You had a stretch of like three, four, five possessions where it was just like alley-oop dunk, good handles around the rim, good touch around the rim as for a putback, um, offensive rebound. You had tip dunks. You had just him making things happen. It looks very much like a Tyson Chandler thing there. And it, again, the power, the footwork and the soft touch around the rim. Those are the three things that most excited me about his game last night. And you know, the team was just better with him. And he didn't get a block on the other end, but in the midst of that three or four play stretch I was talking about, the Spurs, uh, I believe it was on a pick and roll, had a straight line to the basket. And he closes out so hard and contests the shot. I don't think he actually blocks it. The stat sheet, he ended with a block. I don't think it was that play. Um, but he contests it so much so 
that he makes the guy adjust and they miss what looks like a point blank basket. And that's just him making the effort. And then he goes the other way and gets an and one dunk, um, which is just awesome. Uh, Luca fed him two or three plays in a row and it was just feast, feast, feast. Wimby wasn't in at that moment. So love that. Love everything about that. I do think he has the potential to be Tyson Chandler 2.0. And the fact that Tyson's his mentor only makes me feel more confident in that. I feel very good about this pickup. And I think you got your center of the future right now. And you don't even have to wait for him to develop to be at that level. I think he should be your everyday center essentially right now. I think Cade was a little too cute with the starting lineup and made an assumption. Maxi had a good game. I'll give Maxi defensive credit. Maxi had a good game, but it, it's just not the same. You know, you had Derek Jones Jr. starting. He only played 11 minutes. Lively, the two live crew. That is your dude. Um, that is your guy moving forward, and you shouldn't mess with it. Just trying to outthink it. So, let's talk about Luca closing this up here again. These are five general thoughts here. I'll have a little bit of bonus content. Don't worry. Luca is still Luca, as it turns out. He had 33 points, including multiple soul snatching buckets in those closing moments. 13 rebounds and 10 assists for his 57th career triple-double. Good googly moogly. The fact that that's so pedestrian for him now is just absurd. But Luca, you know, as great as he was, free throws are still a question. They're still iffy. He was 4 of 7 at the stripe. I don't love that. But he did close out this game strong, and I think he fed on the fact that this whole thing was a circus around Wimby. All the hype, all the anticipation about Wimby, what he was going to do. And even though Wimby didn't have a big game, anything he did drew a reaction. And so I think Luca basically was just like, I'm going to remind you who not only is the best player in the state, I'm going to remind you who arguably the best player in this league is, the best player in this world is. I loved how Dallas was more aggressive in pushing the pace. They played with much better pace this, this game than I saw any in the last several years, I thought. Um, I think Luca's conditioning, even though his style of play doesn't necessarily look different, uh, I thought the, the pace was better. I thought he looked like he was better conditioned than he's been in some of the recent seasons and early on particularly. And I like the fact that now with Kyrie and even Josh Green a couple times kind of running things a little bit, Allowing Luca to play off ball, you're just going to get more out of him. It doesn't have to produce a spot up open shot. I would love that. I think he would be great in those opportunities. He just never gets them. Really, though, it's the fact that Luca is able to rest. He doesn't have to sprint around like a chicken with his head cut off every play on the offensive end and then on the defensive end have other guys attacking him. Like you can rest him a little bit now by letting him play off the ball. Just a little bit. He's still your primary guy. You saw closing this out. It's still his show. But even still, I think he's going to be so much better suited for this. And I, I felt like it paid dividends in the closing moments of this game because Luca was just, like I said, he was snatching souls out there. He was ready to claim that moment and to put this game away. The Spurs, you know, Wimby had, I think, nine points in the uh, fourth quarter. That's nice. It, it's... They kept it competitive. They stayed right there until the end. Luca delivers a dagger with a little over a minute left. I think it was, or maybe it was a little under a minute. Might have been like 48 seconds. But, you know, it's just fantastic stuff. The Spurs are not going to be a great team this year. They're going to be much improved, but they're not a great team. They're dangerous enough now with Wimby and some of these other parts they have that they could easily trip you up if you're not ready for them. But this is a game that Dallas had to scrap and claw and fight for that on one hand, you would say, I really wish that you had just handled your business and maybe not double digit win, but keep them at arm's length. And then if they close a little bit late to make it look better than it was fine. Instead, Dallas played most of this game from behind. It felt like, and they didn't really start to assert themselves until midway through the third quarter. And then they still had to scratch and claw and fight through multiple tied game situations late in that game in crunch time. So here's the good news. I'm going to take out of this. Here's the positive. I'm going to deride from this. They were abysmal in crunch time last year, especially down the last 15 game stretch here. This is a morale thing, not just winning, not just silencing all the hype around Wimby and asserting, Hey, this is still our state. We're the best team in this state, but also the fact that you get a big win in crunch time and you're able to get some stops. That is significant. 
Don't get it twisted. The defense is still a work in progress. This team has a ways to go. However, aside from that first quarter, I felt like that was a middle of the pack defense with the potential to be much more. And that is a positive because we didn't see that hardly at all last year. Last year, they were 29th in defense. Second half of the season after the all-star break, they were like 31st. They were abysmal. They were at least average last night. And with Luka and Kyrie, that's going to be a top five offense, maybe a top three offense in the league, at bare minimum, top 10. That kind of offense paired with even an average defense is going to do you a lot of good. The problem last year was you had a top 10 offense and a terrible defense, and you still had to collapse to miss the playoffs and the play in, but you, you were in position to be uh, as high as the six seed, I think at one point before you just completely collapsed. So yeah, I look at the Mavericks and I think they're better. They have room to get better. The parts they have are going to get better. And that leads me to believe this is going to be a team that wins about 46. I'm going to say between 45 and 48 games. I'm going to pick 46 and I'm going to say that they are the six seed. I could see them being as high as the five, but realistically, I think they are a six or a, at worst a seven seed. Um, maybe that's a little bit of homerism, but that's my gut feeling looking at this team last night. Health permitting, looking at the talent they have and the fits they have. The fact is, Lively is exactly what they needed so, so bad last year. And now they have it. And they don't have it in the form of a 27 or a 30-year-old Tyson Chandler depending on which dent you want to look at. They have it in the form of a 19-year-old and a guy who I think, because I do think he has the potential with time to extend his range a little bit, to fit a little bit better into the modern game than Tyson could if he came into the league right now, I'm willing to bet that he can be not just... I, I think he's almost like Pokemon terms. He's almost the evolution of Tyson Chandler, the next iteration, the next form of Tyson Chandler um, realized. I think that potential is there. I'm putting a lot of a lot of hype on the kid. I get it, but I absolutely see something special looking at him. He's not he's not uh, a guy that's going to be an all star probably, but he's a guy who can absolutely be an all defensive team player. He's a guy who can be a cornerstone foundation of your franchise for the foreseeable future. And I think he's going to be a difference maker, and that's the big thing. He's going to help you. He's going to be able to rebound. He's going to be able to kind of quarterback your defensive assignments a little bit. And he's going to be an unselfish guy who doesn't need you to run plays for him or do anything like that. Rounding out the box score, you had Kyrie with 22 points on and six assists. Again, not a great shooting night for Kyrie. He was 10 of 24 from the field. Uh, I think one of eight from three. So he struggled a bit last night, but even still 22 spot from Kyrie. Grant Williams, not Greg Williams. Thank you for that autocorrect last night on the community post I put out. Chipped in 17 points in, um, and six rebounds on six of 11 from the field, including four of eight from distance. That is why you acquired him. That is why you went out and got the man because that is, again, a vital piece that you've been missing. That and the versatility on defense is what you needed. Josh Green off the bench played 30 minutes and had 11 points. He also banked in a three from the top of the arc in the closing seconds of the third quarter. Took the shot a little bit early. I don't know why. He had 3.3 seconds left when he pulled up, and thankfully he banked it in. Spurs obviously get one more shot, but they don't knock it down before the buzzer. So, okay. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, good good contribution from Josh Green. Uh, I like the energy he brought and everything. And, uh, you know, for whatever it's worth, and I'm not trying to draw a broader uh, conversation or commentary here, for whatever it's worth, again, for the hype around Lively, Lively, or sorry, for the hype around Wimby, Lively, outplayed him last night. He played eight more minutes, about 31 minutes compared to 23. He had more points, 16 compared to 15, more rebounds, 10 compared to five. Same on blocks one. Uh, he also had a steal, and he was three of four at the line compared to 0 of one for Wimby. And then Wimby had five turnovers and Lively had one. Again, microcosm. But for all the hype that one guy got and the other guy being like, a, oh, that's a nice pickup, but nobody else really talking about it. I think Lively, not, and again, I'm not trying to draw a broader commentary about, oh, the Mavericks got the real best play. No, 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 no. However, I will say, I, I think he is a perfect fit, and I think he was ready for the challenge of saying, hey, don't forget about me. 
Like I'll, I'll stay within my role. I'm not going to be the flash and the sizzle, but don't forget about me. Don't overlook me and just think there's only one center out on this floor worth talking about. So kudos to Lively. Kudos to the Mavericks for finally getting a win in the season opener. It's been a minute. And uh, you know what? 1-0 and is a lot better than 0-1 when it all comes down to it. Doesn't matter if it's pretty. Doesn't matter if it's clean. We got 82 of these SOBs in the regular season. And then we got playoffs, hopefully. So long way to go. You don't question the how or the why. All you focus on is the end result. The end result is Dallas had a whole lot to look, look happy with and feel good about last night. And that alone is worth its weight in gold. Like the video, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!